Ah, coronavirus. Do you remember that guy? Will we ever know where it came from? Well, not if people keep deleting all the documents that reveal its origins. <coughs> Hello there, you 5.4 million awakening wonders. Aren't we doing well? Take a moment to congratulate yourself on not being a conditioned citizen, on being open to different narratives, on being a critical thinker, awakening to new possible truths. If you want to speed up the process, why not come and see me live? There's a link in the description. I'll get you thinking critically. For example, you might think, this guy is getting on my nerves. Yeah, come and see that. There's a link in the description. Sign up to my mailing list. I'll put a link at the end. And if you're not a subscriber yet, subscribe now. It really helps us. Hey, um, I've got some interesting news for you. Remember coronavirus? Well, that was ages ago. I don't care about that. No, honestly, it was really important. Everyone was talking about it all the time. All the laws everywhere in the world changed. All sorts of things were mandated. New attitudes had to be immediately adopted. It was an incredibly important time. Now, one of the things we didn't used to be able to talk about was the idea that coronavirus may have originated in a laboratory, specifically the laboratories in Wuhan that do investigations into coronavirus. It might come from the wet market, might come from those laboratories. We don't know. Thankfully, Vanity Fair have obtained some documents. Like, why is it Vanity Fair? I thought Vanity Fair was like that like, celebrities and like bras and like one of the things where you get a perfume and paint stinks of perfume. But now what they're doing is, well, rip this off. It's the origins of coronavirus. Ah, oh, put it back, put it back, for God's sake. Um, so listen to this article because new documents have been revealed because at the advent, the inception, the beginning of the pandemic, this biologist, he did a crazy thing, the mad conspiracy theorist. He did some studies to see if he could find out where it came from. Obviously, he got in touch with Fauci, Anthony Fauci, people charged with being uh, like investigating it and and handling it and managing it at a national and indeed international scale. And of course, Fauci being in charge, he was very keen to get his hands on any new information. Let's get into the story, thanks to Vanity Fair. On June the 18th, 2021, an evolutionary biologist named Jesse D. Bloom, what do you know? You're only an evolutionary biologist. Shut your mouth, you conspiracy theorist sent the draft of an unpublished scientific paper he'd written to Dr. Anthony Fauci. Remember him from the t-shirts, from the stickers, the good guy? Him. Bloom specialises in the study of how viruses evolve. He is the most ethical scientist I know, said Sergi Pond, a fellow evolutionary biologist. I can see why they wouldn't want him involved. <laughs> the paper Bloom had written, known as a preprint because it had yet to be peer-reviewed or published, contained sensitive revelations about the National Institute of Health. In the interest of transparency, he wanted Fauci to see it ahead of time. He seems to me to be a scientist acting in good faith. One of the things that happened during this pandemic, and I think it's a shame, is there was a lot of polarisation. But I feel that polarisation began as a result of a media campaign to shame unvaccinated people. My personal opinion is I don't know what the right thing for people to do medically is. I don't know whether you should take your diabetes medicine or not, or your heart medication. I don't know. But what I don't think is healthy is shaming people for having understandable scepticism and doubt about any government or big pharma project because both the government and big pharma have behaved in ways in the past that require scepticism when dealing with them. More than a year into the pandemic, the genesis of SARS-CoV-2, I refuse to call it that, it's too complicated, COVID, the virus that causes COVID-19, oh, I get it, was still a mystery. Most scientists believe that it had made the leap from bats to humans naturally via an intermediary species. Batman? Most likely at a market in Wuhan. What the hell are you doing there, Batman? Get back to Gotham. The Joker's running amok. But a growing contingent were asking if it could have originated inside a nearby laboratory that is known to have conducted risky coronavirus research. Risky. Whoa, we're researching coronavirus, but also I'm a bit drunk. <laughs> if it could have originated inside a nearby laboratory that is known to have conducted risky coronavirus research funded in part by the United States. What did your parents do to you to make you so suspicious? Did you think we caused it in the laboratory? That's right. Mm. Go down that wet market. It stinks of coronavirus down there. It's up the walls. They've got them pink armadillo things. They're eating bats. And to think you blamed us. We were doing some experiments. We were organising a surprise party. And you've ruined it. Bloom's paper was the product of detective work he'd undertaken after noticing that a number of early SARS-CoV-2 genomic sequences mentioned in a published paper from China had somehow vanished without a trace. 
Where have they vanished to? Who's deleted them? What's gone on there? The sequences, which map the nucleotides that give a virus its unique genetic identity, are key to tracking when the virus emerged and how it might have evolved. Oh, how weird that that went missing. In Bloom's view, their disappearance raised the possibility that the Chinese government might be trying to hide evidence about the pandemic's early spread. You cynical bastards at Vanity Fair. Why don't you stick to taking pictures of Leonardo DiCaprio? Piecing together clues, Bloom established that the NIH itself had deleted the sequences from its own archive at the request of researchers in Wuhan. At the beginning of this, when it was all like, come on, we've all got to stick together. Don't you remember seeing them things on tape? I remember watching that once where everyone was doing a parade about Fauci and wearing T-shirts and dancing around. If you'd known at that point that Wuhan had requested information be deleted and the NIH, of which Fauci is the head, collaborated with that, would you go, oh, no, he's just doing that for the right... How hard do you want to believe in something? Now he was hoping Fauci and his boss, NIH director Francis Collins, could help him identify other deleted sequences that might shed light on the mystery. This guy at Bloom is carrying out on good I discovered that these sequences have been deleted. Can you help me? Yeah, we can help you. Have him killed. Bloom had submitted the paper to a preprint server, a public repository of scientific papers awaiting peer review. On the same day, he'd sent a copy to Fauci and Collins. It now existed in a kind of twilight zone. Not published and not yet public, but almost certain to appear online soon. Collins immediately organised a Zoom meeting for Sunday, June the 20th. He invited two outside scientists, evolutionary biologist Christian Anderson and virologist Robert Gary, and allowed Bloom to do the same. Bloom chose Pond and Rasmus Nielsen, a genetic biologist. Six months after that meeting, Bloom remained so troubled by what transpired that he wrote a detailed account which Vanity Fair obtained. Vanity Fair, man, they're going for it, aren't they? After Bloom described his research, the Zoom meeting became extremely contentious, he wrote. Listen, I've just been doing this research. It seems that the sequence has been deleted and possibly that sequence could have come from... And then we found out that it was at the request of Wuhan. Bloom, would you call yourself a kind man, a helpful man? Yeah, generally, I try and help. Then why are you trying to ruin my fucking life? Anderson leapt in, saying he found the preprint deeply troubling. Hey, I find this deeply troubling. If the Chinese scientists wanted to delete their sequences from the database, which NIH policy entitled them to do, it was unethical for Bloom to analyse them further, he claimed. But that sequence if I understood it correctly, could reveal the origins and evolution of the pandemic. That's vital information. That's more important than, like, the clerical entitlement of the Wuhan lab. How dare you? How dare you question the Wuhan lab? It's written into their contract. Tea three times a day and delete any sequences that you find troubling. It's their proudest tradition. Instantly, Nielsen and Anderson were yelling at each other, Bloom wrote, with Nielsen insisting that the early Wuhan sequences were extremely puzzling and unusual. Fout she then weighed in, objecting to the preprint's description of Chinese scientists surreptitiously deleting the sequences. The word was loaded, said Fauci, and the reason they'd asked for deletions was unknown. That word is loaded. I don't like you saying that. I thought we were trying to find out the origins of the virus. We're not playing Jeopardy. It's not a word game. Who cares? That's when Anderson made a suggestion that surprised Bloom. Why don't you fuck off? <laughs> he said he was a screener at the preprint server, which gave him access to papers that weren't yet public. He then offered to either entirely delete the preprint or revise it in a way that would leave no record that this had been done. Bloom refused, saying that he doubted either option was appropriate, given the contentious nature of the meeting. He wanted to strike it from the record. Again, I'm not saying anything happened. I'm not saying there's been any foul play, skullduggery, jiggery pokery, tomfoolery. But according to our man Bloom here, Anderson said we can delete that paper, we can remove without trace that this whole thing has happened. There's already been sequences deleted that could give information that indicates the origins and evolution of virus. If there's nothing wide, what's all this deleting and hiding and apparent skullduggery all about? The wagon circling on that Zoom call reflected a siege mentality at the NIH whose cause was much larger than Bloom and the missing sequences. In 2014, Fauci's agency had issued a $3.7 million grant to EcoHealth Alliance, a non-governmental organisation dedicated to predicting and helping to prevent the next pandemic by identifying viruses that could leap from wildlife to humans. Do you think there's any risks with this kind of experiment? Suppose that it could actually happen? Yeah. The grant proposed to screen wild and captive bats in China, analyse sequences in the laboratory to gauge the risk of bat viruses infecting humans and build predictive models to examine future risk. 
the Wuhan Institute of Virology, was a key collaborator to whom EcoHealth Alliance gave almost $600,000 in sub awards. Hold on, I've heard that before somehow. Wuhan. This is outrageous that something this plausible has been redacted from the public conversation and that we were expected to blindly comply for so long. I'm not suggesting I know anything other than what's in the contents of this Vanity Fair article as reported by our man Bloom here. But what this leads me to conclude is that there's a good deal of room for debate, conversation and circumspection. And how does it make you feel additionally that whenever anyone talks about this stuff, they're labelled a conspiracy theorist? Delete the files. Eradicate all memory of the conversation. Don't admit that EcoHealth Alliance gave 600 grand to the Wuhan. Bloody hell, it's starting to look like there's something to hide, isn't it? As it happened, EcoHealth Alliance failed to predict the COVID-19 pandemic. Well, that was a waste of 600 grand. Yes. And I'm afraid that's only the beginning of the problem. Them failing to predict the pandemic is like Will Smith failing to predict that Chris Rock's about to get a slap round the face. Even though it erupted into public view at the Huanan Seafood Wholesale Market, a short drive from the WIV itself. <laughs> a short drive. <laughs> I, I just feel guilty doing this. We should just walk. It's only over there. I could probably spit that far. Don't do that though, will you? In the ensuing months, every move of EcoHealth Alliance and its president, Peter Daszak, came under scrutiny by a small army of scientific sleuths and assorted journalists. What, they wanted to know, had really gone on at the WIV? Why had Daszak been so cagey about the work his organisation had been funding there? We were going to do a surprise birthday party for you and all the people down at the wet food market. We would got them their armadillos, we would got them bat soup, and you spoiled it. And were Fauci and other officials trying to direct attention away from research that the US had been, at least indirectly, financing. As for transparency-minded scientists in the US, Daszak early on set about covertly organising a letter in the Lancet Medical Journal that sought to present the lab leak hypothesis as a groundless and destructive conspiracy theory. Where have I heard that before, conspiracy th oh. And Fauci and a small group of scientists, including Anderson and Gary, worked to enshrine the natural origin theory during confidential discussions in early February 2020, even though several of them privately expressed that they felt a lab-related incident was likelier. So, look, at very least we can say that all the way through the pandemic, the conversation should have sounded like this. It might have come from that Wuhan lab. It might have done. It might have come from that wet market. Instead of actively discrediting it, just days before those discussions began, Vanity Fair has learned, good work guys, Robert Redfield, a virologist and the director of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, had urged Fauci privately to vigorously investigate both the lab and natural hypotheses. He was then excluded from the ensuing discussions. Hey, Mr. Fauci, I'd like to suggest that we examine both the lab leak and natural origin theory. That's very good. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. Have him killed. Excluded from the ensuing discussions, learning only later that they'd even occurred. Their goal was to have a single narrative, Redfield told Vanity Fair. Why top scientists linked arms to tamp down public speculation about a lab leak when their emails revealed via FOIA requests and congressional reviews suggest they held similar concerns remains unclear. So they were concerned about themselves, wouldn't let us be concerned about it. Do you remember when CNN were doing all those Some mad cap tin had conspiracy theory nuts that this thing came from the Wuhan lab. All the while, the actual Government agencies were discussing it themselves. It's at very least a viable authority, and at worst, the truth that is being suppressed. It's somewhere in that range. Was it to protect against the revelation that could prove fatal to certain risky research that they deem indispensable, or to protect vast streams of grant money from political interference or government regulation? In my view, even more significant than that, this kind of doubt in the system could be globally disruptive. How can you ever trust them again? The effort to close the debate in favour of the natural origin hypothesis continues today. The New York Times gave front page treatment to a set of preprints claiming that a new analysis of public data from the Huanan market in Wuhan provided dispositive evidence that the virus first leapt to humans from animals sold there. But a number of top scientists, Bloom among them, questioned that assertion, saying the reprints, while worthy, relied on incomplete data and found no infected animal.
So that non-peer review paper was splashed all over the media. It turned up everywhere. Old Bloom, like a little darling, ringing up Fauci. I got some troubling information, Dr. Fauci. You might want to see it before I get it peer reviewed in case there's any concerns. Oh, thank you for bringing this to us, Bloom. We'll deal with this right away. Have him killed. Some scientists seem as almost hell-bent on naming the human end market as the site of the origin of the pandemic. And some members of the media seem more than happy to embrace these conclusions without care examination, said Stanford microbiologist David Roman. Conspiracy theorist! The issue is far too important to be decided in the public domain by unreviewed studies, incomplete and unconfirmed data, and unsubstantiated proclamations. Oh, you wax job. We built this city on unsubstantiated data, unconfirmed rumours, and rock and roll. Last year, Dr. Jeffrey Sachs, the Columbia University economist who oversees the Lancet's COVID-19 commission, dismissed Daszak from the helm of a task force investigating the virus's genesis after he flatly refused to share progress reports from his contested research grant. Daszak and NIH have acted badly, Sachs told Vanity Fair. Good work, guys. There's been a lack of transparency and there is a lot more to know and that can be known. He said that the NIH has support independent scientific investigation. Yes, yes. To examine the possible role in the pandemic of the NIH, EcoHealth Alliance, the Wuhan Institute of Virology, and a partner laboratory at the University of North Carolina. Okay, so they admit that it should happen. Now look, try to focus and try to be conscious. They don't want you to talk about this no more. They don't want you to think about it. The wagons rolled on. There's new stories. There's a new game in town. There's new things to care about. And already the same paradigm is being applied. Don't talk about this or you're a conspiracy theorist. Don't you care about that? Hey, we just got to save people's lives. The same rhetoric, the same stuff, the same cosy neoliberal rhetoric being deployed to shut down investigation. Well, it seems to me that there's sufficient evidence that investigation is required. It seems to me that scepticism, critical thinking, joint awakening are necessary. Don't let them confuse you, shut you down or condemn you. This story is based on more than 100,000 internal EcoHealth Alliance documents obtained by Vanity Fair, as well as interviews with five former staff members and 33 other sources. Oh, it's just a concoction of lies, isn't it? But other than the 100,000 internal EcoHealth Alliance documents and interviews with five former staff members and 33 other sources, what else have you got? While the documents do not tell us where COVID-19 came from, they shed light on the world in which EcoHealth Alliance has operated. One of murky grant agreements flimsy oversight and the pursuit of government funds for scientific advancement in part by pitching research of steeply escalating risk. Well, congratulations to Vanity Fair for putting that article together. Congratulations to the man Bloom there for being so diligent and staying true to the scientific principles of the analysis of evidence and transparency and staying away from agenda-led outcomes. What do you think about this? For me, This tells me a few things. The way that that pandemic was conducted from a media and governmental basis was skewed from the offset. Information was repressed, people were unduly condemned, conversation was stifled, and we can learn from that. Don't be like a little short memory span social media, oh, I forgot about that now, I'm thinking about something else now. Stay awake. Hit me up in the comments below if you like this video. Have a look at this one. Oh, this one, they're both equally good in their own way. Sign up to the mailing list in case I ever get, you know, in case old Russ ever finds himself in a little pickle and I need to communicate with you directly. And uh, more importantly than any of that, please stay free.